Hey, what's up everybody, Osama here, and in this video we're going to learn how to set up a class booking calendar just like this one in Go High Level. Now, as you can see in this example, I have created a class booking calendar for live yoga classes for Yoga Studio. So the use case is they want to charge $99 for each yoga class, and they have classes going on on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6 a.m. and 7 a.m., and they have 15 seats available in each class. So if you want to create a similar structure for your events, workshops, or classes, you can easily do that by using the class booking calendar and go high level. So let's dive into the setup and I'll show you exactly a step-by-step -step process on how you can achieve this. All right, so the first thing you have to do is head over to settings and calendars on your go high level sub account and then you have to click on create calendar here and from here you'll select class booking where it says one host meets with multiple participants so we'll select that here then we're just going to give it to name and then add some description here you can also do some formatting just to make sure that it looks nice and then you have to assign a team member to this calendar so this will be ideally the person who will be leading the class and there can be only one host so make sure that you select the relevant person for this calendar then we're going to give it a custom url here and then how much is the meeting duration so i'm going to keep it 30 minutes for one yoga class and then you have to define how many seats per class so let's do 15 as i showed you in my example earlier so 15 should be fine and then for booking availability i'm just going to keep it to mondays wednesdays and fridays of course this is where you'll put in your business hours or what timings are these yoga classes available so we'll do this and for this one i'm just going to do 6 a.m till ATM. So these will be the two hours of operation. And for the meeting location, I've added the Zoom ID where they will be joining. So if this is an online class for a Google Meet or Zoom, you can mention that here. Or if it's physical, then you can also mention an address if you need to. And then the last option we have is accept payments. So if you want to accept payments for this class, you can enable it or you can disable it based on your use case. And then here I'm going to put $99 and then you can also add a description if you need to. After that, we are going to click on advanced settings. Now under the meeting details, we have an option to add a calendar logo. I always advise to add it just so the calendar looks professional. You can have it square or circle based on your liking. So once we have the logo here, the name and description is already titled since we already took care of it. And then if I scroll down, you'll see meeting invite title. You can also customize that. I usually like to put in something that's more relevant to their booking because this is the title of the meeting invite that will go out to these people. So we can put something like this where we have the name of the host as well as what is this class for. So it can help your customers identify what this invite is for. Then we're going to head over to availability and you can see we have Monday, Wednesday, and Friday already dialed in. You can customize the timings here if you need to. And then I'm going to change the setting for meeting interval from 30 minutes to 60 minutes because I only want to offer 60 minute slots. Even though the meeting duration is 30 minutes, so let's say the first class is 6 a.m., the calendar will show that there is 6 a.m. available as per this availability here. And if I have meeting interval at 60, then the next slot it will show is at 7. So because I only want to take two classes at one day, I will do 60 here and then 30 here here and that will just make sure that we're doing two slots per each day then you can also put in a minimum scheduling notice and what should be the date range how far in the future should a person be able to schedule into the calendar so you can control that here and again we have seats per class if you need to change that and then pre-buffer time or post-buffer time so let's say if somebody has booked a slot if you require pre-buffer time or post-buffer for some reason you can also put that here once this is all done we can head over to the next step which is forms and payments so here you can customize the form or ask more questions if you need to and then we can scroll down here to where it says accept payments so you can see we already have it enabled you can also accept partial payments if you need to and then we have a description box to explain what this payment is for if you need to declare any policy you can do that very easily here and if you want to test this calendar out on how this would work you can put it in test mode and hit save and try but if you want to keep it live on the website or if you're actually taking bookings i suggest that you double check that it is turned to live once this is all set, let's head over to the notifications and additional options tab. So if you scroll up, you'll see who should receive the notification. So if you want to notify the assigned user and the contact or any additional emails maybe in your administration, you can do that here and then input the email addresses separate by commas. And then right below that, you also have an option to allow Google or Outlook calendar invites, which is usually helpful. So you can do that. And then you can also assign context to the respective calendar team members each time an appointment is booked. So if somebody is booked with the host of this calendar, it will just make sure that their assigned content owner also changes. So if you need to do that, you can also enable it. 
And then right below that, we have cancellation and reschedule policy. So you can allow or disallow it depending on the use case. And if you also want to set an expiration for rescheduling or cancellation, you can actually do like 24 hours before the appointment. You can easily do that here. So this is how you can be fully in control of the reschedules and cancellations as well. And then under additional notes, this is what will go out in the invite. So if they accept the invite or see the invite, this is what they will see under the additional notes. Once this is all set, the final step is customizations where you can play around with the colors, make it a bit more visual, maybe brand it in your own colors, and then change some text like the button text or choose to show the title of the calendar or not. So these are some customizations that you can make on your calendar. So once you're fully happy with all of these settings, the final step is to save this. So once it is saved, we're going to click on the three dots here, click on share, and this is the scheduling that we can choose. We can also try to use the permanent link. And if you need to embed it into your website or landing pages, you can easily copy this code and then embed it into an HTML element so for now i'm just going to copy the link and then we're going to open it into a new tab and once it loads up you can see the calendar here we have the title here then it says the total amount that will be charging as well you can also see the description with the formatting we did and then you can see we have monday wednesdays and fridays available 6 a.m and 7 a.m and it's also showing the number of seats so we can easily make a booking here as a user we can click on the date select the time put in our details and credit card information and then schedule a meeting and once the booking has been made for this class, the user can see all the information here and they can also add the invite to the Google Calendar, Outlook or iCloud. And then if you need to check the appointments that you've been getting, you can click on calendars on the left side in your sub account. And then under appointments, you should be able to find the appointments that have been made into your class booking calendar. And for some reason, if somebody reaches out to you saying that I need to reschedule my booking to the next available slot, you can easily do that from this end as well. You can click on the three dots here, click on reschedule. And then under date and time, you can set the rescheduled time. So we can do, let's say, then the coming Monday. And this will automatically set the end time as well. And now if you click here, it will actually reschedule the appointment for this specific contact. All right, so that was all about the class booking calendars. This is Sama signing off. I'll see you in the next one.